Hey guys, welcome back. I've got another project that I want to show you, only this time it's not one of my own projects. It's from somebody on our forums over on pseudomod.com. And if you spent much time at all there, then you've probably noticed that we've got a lot of really smart and talented people on there. This is from forum member Moosepur, or Moosepiar, or Moosepur. I don't know, I asked him and he wasn't even sure how to pronounce it. But anyway, this is his project, it's called the Tiny Pie, and it's basically as minimalist and tiny as you can possibly go with a gaming handheld based on the Raspberry Pi Zero. For reference, here it is next to a Minty Pi. You could almost fit two of these things inside of an Altoids tin, small enough that you could even carry it around on a keychain without looking ridiculous. So he was kind enough to send me a set of parts. He's already got a written guide and he's working on a series of video guides for putting it together. But I recorded myself putting it together and thought that I'd go through that with you guys and share my thoughts on it. And be sure to check the description. I'll have a link to a blog post. And on there, I'll have links to where you can buy these kits as well as any other parts that you might need for it. So just like with the Minty Pi, the first step is to attach the Raspberry Pi Zero to the board. And the easiest way to do this here is to put a screw in each of the holes and kind of bolt them together. And that'll line it up and hold it in place while you solder each of the GPIO pinholes. And then after you do that, there will be a few components to add to the other side of the board, like this directional switch. It's like a tiny joystick that you can also click in, which is how you do the start button on here. And we've got the power switch and the action buttons. Really simple, you just stick them on there. A few of these actually have pegs in the bottom of them to hold them in place and add some solder to each of the contacts. For this slider switch up at the top, you'll actually need to move it to either side in order to get at the contacts that are on the side of it to attach it. And then these white squares are the speakers on here. Again, you just line them up and put some solder on it. Not much to it. This resistor here is for the backlight so that you don't burn out the LED in the screen. And then to attach the screen itself, the easiest way to do this, line it up and tape it down and then add a little bit of solder to each of the contacts. It might look scary because it's a ribbon cable, uh, but it's really not bad. I had to remove the double-sided tape on the back of the screen, otherwise things wouldn't fit inside of the case. The charging board charges at a rate of one amp, but the battery that we're using is only about 300 milliamp hours. So you're really not supposed to charge at a rate higher than the capacity of the battery itself but that's pretty easy to fix on these chargers. There's a resistor marked R3, and you can take that off and replace it with a 4700 ohm resistor, and that'll bring the charging rate down enough to where it's safe to charge this smaller battery with. Now we need to add a couple of wires that will attach to the PCB, and then we'll attach the battery itself. The battery that I'm using here is 300 milliamp hours. Uh, earlier in the video, I showed a 350 milliamp hour one. That one wound up being just a little bit too thick, so the case for this is actually optional. Uh, you can use it just fine as it is, but it's much nicer with it. He's got STL files that you can download to print it out yourself, but he also sells kits that include the case. And so the battery charger just kind of slides and snaps into place. You can set the PCB on top of it. Then we'll attach the power wires to the PCB. And once you do that, you can slide on the faceplate with these little 3D printed button extenders in it. And once you do that, you can screw it in. And then slide on the top part of the case. Now the official part for the joystick is this little round thumbstick, which looks great and it's fine, but the theme that I was going for was like an original Game Boy kind of thing. So I modeled and printed out this cap in the shape of a D-pad to kind of finish off the look. It's got two buttons, and if you click in the D-pad, that's the start button, and then if you press the toggle switch at the top in, that's the select button. So if you want to go back to the ROM selection screen, you can press both of those in at the same time and that'll take you out. And just like with the VMU project that I did recently, you might be surprised with the number of games that you can actually play on this. Any Game Boy or Game Boy Color game, and a bunch of arcade games as well. 
So this is actually pretty easy to put together. I would say if you got one, you could expect to put it together in one or two evenings max. I put together this sleeve that I printed out in flexible filament that I showed earlier in the video. I'll have links to where you can get one of those if you want. And yeah, this was a lot of fun. So again, thanks to Moosepur, or however you pronounce it, for sending me these parts. If you like this kind of thing, then definitely head over to the forums. People are coming up with all kinds of fun projects like this. And one last thing that I want to mention, you might have seen me using these helping hands from Quad Hands in the video. They sent me some to check out. They didn't say that I had to do an actual review of them or anything like that. I've really been enjoying using them. The only thing that I wasn't a huge fan of was that the clips themselves don't rotate freely like they do in other sets of helping hands that I've used. Uh, but I shot them an email asking if maybe I was just missing something obvious, and it turns out I was. You can actually uh, loosen these, rotate them, and then retighten them. So it's an extra step, but that's really the only negative thing that I could say about them. They're nice and sturdy, much sturdier than the ones that I've been using. So again, thanks to them for sending these over, uh, and I'll have a link to where you can get some of these if you want as well. well I think that's about it. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.